for this era where we're at now, at this time, this is quite a pacey match as well. Um, I think a lot of people, when they go back and watch between 95 or maybe 94 to 97, a lot of people struggle with the pace of it all because it was a lot slower. But again, as I've said, and I don't know whether it's just because I'm a bit of a geek and an old school fan, but I I loved the that pace. I hate watching things at you know 120 miles per hour nowadays with 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 everything. I think it's it's great and everything, and I respect everybody that does it. But for me, I can only really bear it with cruiserweights because that kind of makes sense to me. But when I see like the top guys doing it, I'm like, really? Like they there's no selling involved anymore, um, and it's a bit of a shame. The art of selling, I'm telling you. It's one of the big things. Seeing how Vader going for this, trying to get him up for suplex. Oh, don't tell me Razor's going to turn this round, surely. Wow. I tell you what, pro- kudos to Razor, but also kudos to, to Vader there, because you, you, that is a that is a unit <laughs> to be able to do that. But he, you know, He's got to put some spring in that step for that to pull off right, I tell you. But he made that look good. Oh, man. That is like a no-hold-back clothesline there. The other thing as well, I suppose, about Vader, like from where we are today at least, he's another one of those guys that, for whatever reason, um, you know, didn't get that call up in the nick of time for the for the Hall of Fame. I was so disappointed about it because he, he'd like inducted somebody else before then as well and I just yeah, just really got on my nerves had WWE drop the ball on that a bit for me because they knew this guy was unwell at the time. Um I remember hearing about it as well. I, I think I was in like Hong Kong at the time and the whole illness thing had come out and I was like, why are they not just making him a bit of an exception. We know he's going to go in. Like, why not just do it now while the guy is with us, you know? Oh, that was nice. That was really good there, what we just saw. That was really cool. The timing of that as well, especially. But yeah, I, I would, you know, I would really like to see him, um, you know, go in at some point, that's for sure. Um, I, I'm just ashamed that he isn't. I'm going to try and like reach out to his son somehow. I don't know. Um, I, he was very active on social media a while ago, but I haven't been able to find him or make contact with him, but I was going to try and make contact, see if I could get him on the show, just to uh, you know have that podcast with him, share, share the stories of his dad and stuff like that. I think that'd be a pretty cool, uh, cool guest. Oh man, don't tell me, this is this is much better than I I could have ever imagined. This uh, we've we've struck gold. Oh man, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I was expecting massive fireworks then, but then maybe I was like expecting too much. I don't know if that was like a the fixed thing that just pulled off and they didn't sell it well enough. Because it looked awkward, like he couldn't do it. Nonetheless, I was just about to say, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that's that's like the icing on the cake right there. But uh, it did go a little bit little bit sour. But I don't, I don't know if that was, that was planned. I don't know. See, now going up for another Vader bomb here. Oh, man. This, no, he's not. He's going to go for that. Oh, to a guy. Here we go. Now, are they going to try it again or... No, Razor's going to lift him from his shoulders. My God. Very, very good match thus far, I would say. A lot of high risk for two guys that are uh, the size they're at. Like I say, Razor's one of those guys you look at and you forget how big he is. But he was... Because he was working in a time where everybody was a giant, basically, um, he doesn't stand out as much. But, you know, a lot of guys today, 
I would say the average height is around six foot. Um, if I'm honest, I think the look of a wrestler has become exceptionally different. Oh man, straight on top of him. That's got to be it, right? Yeah. There you go, that last uh, hurrah there for uh, Razor. Doing the honours, I suppose. The time on a tradition, as they always throw out. Vader picking up the victory, getting the heat. And Rub, I suppose, building towards essentially SummerSlam. Which is which is cool. I mean, there's such a nice long build to come here from this. And uh, I think like the one of the stipulations is is if if he gets this, if he if he wins this, he gets to face Yokozuna. So again, this is establishing and putting Vader on that that pedestal that this is a threat coming for the then WWF champion, the boyhood dream guy himself. There's there's uh, our guy, Doc Hendricks. Now, I wonder how much of a feature he's going to be in my In Your House series. He, uh, he was on it last time. Michael Hayes, of course, with the moustache here as handsome Doc Hendricks. And... Uh, <laughs> then you see Vader getting ratty. Because <laughs> like, he does, he doesn't want to uh, obviously do do the match how he wants it. <laughs> Quite an interesting pairing that they put Jim Cornette with Vader. I mean, it's definitely one I'm a fan of, but because um, he definitely needed a mouthpiece. But I don't know how on earth all this would have come about where it was Jim Cornette gets the gets the nod there to do that. Um, again, this was a time there were a few managers around, to be fair. So, it wasn't sort of un, unheard of. But yeah, pretty good match. Uh, let me know what you guys think uh, by emailing me, as uh, we're now going to take a shot of Paul Bearer there, with an internet. Massive uh, thing, and the Undertaker just behind him. Very, very interesting. Um Anyway, listen, guys, I want to thank you, as always, for uh, checking out this one in your house. Good friends, better enemies. Um, we'll be back on our next one with another, I'm sure, um, obscure in your house match. Not sure which one we're going to do yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a look through the emails and probably go from one of those and uh, see how that goes. What on earth is this that we're watching? This is the shop, I believe. Interesting product placement right there. I'll say no more. Um, Ultimate Warrior. Mm. Very, very interesting. I wonder how many of these got sold. They don't look like something I would want to own, even as a nostalgia, a retro. $39.95 there. Sport hat and hat package, yeah. I still don't think that's going to sell it for me, to be honest with you. Um, let me know what you guys think. Would this do it for you? $39 back then sounds like a lot of money. Like, that sounds like a hell of a lot for a very sort of ordinary T-shirt with just a logo on it. I think, like, yeah, very strange. Anyway, uh, thank you as always, guys. Uh, I've been John Scott. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.